The cursed painting. I should have known better than to take that job, restoring the old painting. From the moment I laid eyes on the grotesque, twisted figures depicted in oils on the ancient canvas, a chill ran down my spine. But I'm an artist, and I've always been drawn to the darker, more disturbing aspects of creativity. Plus, the money on offer was too good to pass up. How I regret that decision now. It started innocuously enough. The painting belonged to an eccentric millionaire who had acquired it at an estate sale years ago. He wanted me to carefully remove the layers of grime and repair any damages the piece had suffered over the centuries since its creation by an unknown master. I worked diligently for weeks, using my finest tools and techniques to gradually reveal the horrific scene, a tableau of anguished human forms contorted into an obscene bacchanalia of depravity and torture. At first, I was able to shrug off the painting's disturbing nature as just being a product of the artist's delusion or depravity. But the more I studied the brushwork, delved into the intertwining bodies, and deciphered their expressions of utmost torment, the more I felt. Unsettled. As if a darkness had seeped out of the canvas and was slowly infecting my mind. The nightmares began shortly after. Terrible, lucid dreams, where I found myself trapped within the painting, one of the hapless figures straining in agony. I would awaken drenched in cold sweat, my heart pounding, able to recall even the most minute details of my night terrors in vivid clarity. Things like the searing pain, as my limbs were twisted at grotesque angles. The acrid stench of burning flesh, as red-hot branding iron sizzled against my naked skin. The guttural, inhuman shrieks of ecstasy from the shadowy tormentors looming over me. At first the dreams were irregular, once every week or two. But they steadily increased in frequency, until I was having them nearly every night. I tried everything to stop them, meditation, drinking heavily before bed in hopes I'd pass out into a deep, dreamless slumber, even potent prescription sleep medications. Nothing worked. The nightmares always came. My waking hours grew increasingly filled with paranoia and dread. I became convinced that the painting was haunted, cursed by the twisted soul who had created it so long ago. Maybe I was going insane from subjecting myself to such an abhorrent vision, over and over through my work. All I knew was that I couldn't escape it, whether asleep or awake. Things took an even darker turn when the hallucinations began. At first they were fleeting, a dark, malformed shape flickering at the edges of my vision, a hoarse, rasping groan like the dying exhalation of an old man, the acrid reek of smoldering hair wafting through the air. But soon the hallucinations became a constant onslaught on my senses whenever I was in the presence of the painting. Grotesque faces would appear, leering at me from the twisted forms caught in an endless moment of torment on the canvas. Hoarse shrieks and anguished wails echoed through my studio, underlaid by a cacophony of mocking laughter from my unseen tormentors. There was always smoke as well thick, choking clouds drifting from the painting, carrying with them the charnel stench of smoldering flesh. On the darkest days, I could have sworn the figures in the painting were actually moving. Squirming and writhing in fresh agonies, their expressions shifting from ones of pain to outright heart-stopping terror, gaping maws opened wide as if they were shrieking in my direction. Begging for my help, before their tormentors appeared and subjected them to new, unimaginable cruelties. Tried fleeing. I abandoned the project, returning the painting to my client, and insisting that the darkness contained within had to be sealed away, never to be exposed to the light again. 
He thought I was insane, raving like a lunatic about a simple art piece being haunted or possessed. But I knew the truth. I knew with every fiber of my being that the painting was steeped in an ancient evil, as twisted and damned as the souls of the figures it depicted. So I left it behind, walking away from the easy money and trying to put it all behind me. For a few weeks, I was able to breathe freely again. I actually dared to indulge a fragile hope that the nightmare was over, that my life could continue as normal. But then the tremors started, violent, uncontrollable fits that would seize my entire body for minutes at a time, leaving me collapsed in a puddle of sweat and vomit, my muscles feeling like I'd been trampled by horses. The doctors were baffled. They ran every test in the book, but none of the results could provide any rational explanation for my symptoms. Of course not, because the tremors weren't being caused by anything medical. They were my mind's desperate way of attempting to purge itself of the darkness the painting had planted there. I knew I had to destroy that unholy abomination before it utterly shattered what remained of my sanity. One night, after being released from the hospital following an intense three-day bout of the tremors, I broke into the mansion where my old client displayed his art collection. I found the painting in his study, still hanging in all its grotesque glory. As I stared into its monstrous depths, the hallucinations crashed over me like a tidal wave. The shrieks and choking clouds of smoke enveloped me completely, the stench of charred flesh overwhelming my senses. And worst of all, the figures were undeniably moving, trapped in a twisted, obscene bacchanal of suffering. That's when I saw him, the painter, grinning out at me from the shadows behind the clawing, writhing shapes on the canvas. An inky, tar-black figure with eyes like glowing red cinders. His mocking laughter echoed all around me, growing louder and more maniacal, until it reached a deafening crescendo. That was when I knew I was never going to be free of this curse. The darkness had burrowed too deeply. I was forever damned. With that realization, a calm numbness washed over me. I removed a hiking lighter and a small bottle of kerosene from my coat pocket and set to work, dousing both the painting and myself in the combustible liquid. I let the lighter fall to the floor, as soon as we were both drenched. The ancient canvas and centuries-old oils went up like a flash, the lurid flames casting my swaying figure in a hellish, backlit silhouette. I barely felt the searing pain. My existence had already dissolved into an endless spiral of torment. As the painter's bellowing laughter grew to a deafening roar, I staggered forward into the inferno, arms outstretched as if to embrace my tormentors. The last thing I felt, before my vision went black, was a cold, unseen force hurling me backwards into the abyss, straight towards the grinning, upturned jaws of the damned.